Uh, Sheikh, what's your advice to a Muslim who wants to marry someone who the parents do not approve on based maybe on cultural or social reasons? We firstly have tried, I'm sure you're aware of myself, I'm sure of yourselves and so many other scholars and uh, many people, we have tried to educate the parents to say that Islam, there is no racism, tribalism, culturalism, uh, even nationality and so on. If there is general kafa'a, general similarity, say you are brought up in Kenya and you belong to different groups in terms of race or in terms of uh, ethnicity, in terms of tribe, the fact that you have a general similarity <coughs> in upbringing is very, uh, is the, the mere, <coughs> the fact that you have similarity is actually <clears throat> the kafa'a that's enough the rest of it uh, is from man not from Allah and his Rasul so we would educate the parents to start with secondly is speak to your parents engage them convince them listen to what they are saying sometimes they are right sometimes the person may not be the one who may look after you but never is the line drawn based on race or based on background and ethnicity rather it is drawn on taqwa on akhlaq on uh, deen deen and akhlaq basically if the person has deen of a level and akhlaq of a level then alhamdulillah it's really uh, uh, you know sufficient we normally say if someone can afford it, they are responsible. They have deen and akhlaq, let it be. If both of them are interested, inshallah. No. So when parents refuse, we need to engage them. Today, someone actually sent me a message while we were coming here to say, my parents are not happy. They want this person to, to have a certain type of a job before they can marry me. So I, the answer that I would have is, either convince your parents or convince that person to say get this type of a job you know <laughs> or convince your parents i mean they, what else would you like to do maybe you can get a respectable person to talk to your parents to educate them to say look you know if the man is responsible then let it be sometimes because we develop a haram relationship when we develop a haram relationship what happens is the that connection makes us blinded to the reality of the person you see what I'm saying? When you develop a haram relationship, you can't see this person is not responsible. You can't see that this person is actually not worth being the father of my children because you are blinded by a haram relationship. So inshallah, if it is halal and if it is done in a good way, I'm sure we would be able to achieve much more in terms of convincing now. Barakallah feekum. Sheikh, you mentioned a point that if a sister sees a, a, a brother and she sees us she sees a potential husband and a potential spouse there is some guidance that you gave that she should always uh, go to the awliya al umur and also seek the guidance of awliya al umur maybe if you could explain who are, what what are you referring to when you say awliya al umur firstly it is the father the father is the ultimate wali he is the guardian allah chose that father to be your father there's no replacement but in the case where the father has passed away or he is not available in some cases uh, maybe he is unreasonable then you can go to the qadi or you can go to the next male relative and uncle perhaps if it's an older person who has a son who is already an adult then the adult that adult son would take that place so the reason is they shouldn't get conned and duped by men and people out there into a scenario that they will regret so you need someone around you who will be that protective figure from your side when a woman is getting married and the man knows uh, the husband knows that this woman has uh, a, a circle of males who i dare cross the line uh -huh. it makes it much more interesting because uh, she is respected she has fathers brothers and so on who are there and you know they just have to greet the son-in-law salamu alaikum and he knows hey i can't really mess with her <laughs> but if you are going to do things on your own chances are that you may be abused it has happened and it continues happening where in some people when they do things all on their own they are abused 
and they don't even realize sometimes they, they it's too late in the day and they feel we can't come back that's so when we say awliya ul umur islam has made it a duty for those who are the awliya and the guardians and the the ones who are the umar, amir of the home to look after those who are under their responsibility